Hello, I'm Diana Keogh, Editor-in-Chief of Sherwick.com. Today we're talking with Dr. Brian Canterbury, who is a urologist with Akron General Medical Center, about the topic of an elevated PSA. Dr. Canterbury has agreed to take questions from our members that have come in off the internet. Dr. Canterbury, the first question is off of Twitter. How effective is a PSA test in screening for cancer? I've heard many different things and can't get a straight answer. Can you help me? That's a tough question. PSA is a very controversial subject in PSA screening as well. Um, it's a hot topic, hot button topic in, amongst the urology community all over the world. Um, it's, a, it's a test that's been around for 20 years and it has significantly reduced our mortality associated with prostate cancer since we found this test. However, it is controversial in that we have to screen a large amount of men before we actually save lives. That being said, the recommendation is still to get a PSA screening starting at age 40 and every year thereafter. Uh, men with family histories of prostate cancer and men uh, who are African American in particular need to be uh, very cognizant of this and, and make sure that they're getting screened appropriately. Um, along with the PSA, a digital rectal exam is recommended as well. And the combination of these two tests are the best that we have at screening for prostate cancer and ultimately diagnosing it. Dr. Canterbury, my PSA is elevated and my doctor is recommending proactive surveillance. The thought of cancer in me just sitting there is unsettling. If you were me, what would you do? That's a difficult question to answer as well. Um, a lot depends on how old you are, um, how elevated your PSA is, and, and other factors that may be playing into this. Um, certainly a large prostate can also cause a PSA to be elevated. I do think it's worthwhile getting more information, particularly if you're younger, or if your PSA is significantly elevated. Um, the, the gold standard treatment though is to get a biopsy and, and if you have an elevated PSA and, and ultimately find a diagnosis. I do recommend that you probably talk to your family physician further about that and, and ask if you, if you shouldn't be referred to a urologist to even talk more. Dr. Kennedy, I've recently received an elevated report on my PSA. Should I get a second opinion? Without knowing um, parameters about your PSA and your, and your actual physical diagnosis and history, it's tough for me to say whether a second opinion is warranted. I think it's always valuable to gain more information about your, your particular case. And again, I'd, I'd really ask you to talk to your family physician, see what they think. If you're uncomfortable with their recommendations, then certainly you have every right to seek a, an opinion elsewhere. My husband is awaiting results of his biopsy. What exactly is a Gleason score and when should we be concerned about it? So a Gleason score is a, a number that is assigned to a diagnosis of prostate cancer. When we take a biopsy of the prostate, we send it to a pathologist and they in turn look at it under a microscope and if they see any prostate cancer, they determine how aggressive the cancer may or may not be. They assign a number, this is called the Gleason score, um, to that cancer and, and, and we look at that number to kind of prognosticate how aggressive the prostate cancer truly is. It gives us as urologists a talking point to speak with you about what we think uh, your prostate cancer may ultimately do to you and what your chances of um, such things as survival and morbidities and other things uh, truly are. Um, it allows us to, to further discuss the prostate cancer with you um, ultimately. Dr. Canterbury, thank you so much for joining us here on Sherwood.com. This has been great information. If you'd like more on the topic of an elevated PSA and what to do about it, please go to our website at www.sherwick.com.